Sunday morning. We gotta get some goddamn work done. Let's see if we can get this list finished up. So we can take Jill shopping, unfortunately. No, I like taking my wife places. We have fun. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check on these two plaques and plates. Then we're gonna finish the fuel gauge, but before we do that, we're gonna paint the, what do you wanna call, spring mount plate with a shock mount and the U-bolts. But first we gotta check on our plates. So let's go see how they did. So here's our little plate. It's not too bad. I think that'll work. Now we just gotta finish it off and clean it up. And I think it'll work. Plates are good. So these are our shock mounts. Um, I don't know why they burned this big hole in there. But this is the center. And when you put it on top of the spring where it would go, it's huge. So I found some washers. I'm gonna sink and weld in there. I'll have to re-drill this hole a little bit bigger to fit over my nut, but I think it'll work out pretty good. So we're gonna clean these up and get them welded. All right, we got our washers welded, our little Krylon spray paint on there. Next to the heat, drying pretty quick. If this was a car we liked, we would not be using Krylon. That is the worst spray paint I've ever used in my life. But it's done. Back to getting the sending unit in. Well, Sunday. Time to take Joe shopping. We didn't quite get everything on our list done, but we're pretty damn close. We got the leaf springs in. Now we're going to put the rear end housing in and get the hell out of here. Alright, it's Monday. Here's our list. We got a lot of shit to do. Right now we're going to go put the other side of the leaf spring in. The um, leaf spring mounting pad where the shock goes and the two U-bolts on the driver's side. Then we are going to start figuring out these ladder bars and that center section. So let's get our fat asses to work and see what we can come up with. Alright, these are the ladder bars that were on the Falcon. I'm loosening all these up, putting them in the middle. Um, the directions I found online said never go out more than, or always have, I guess, three quarters of the way out or three quarters of an inch in. There one. This is two inches long when you take it out. This one is only an inch and a half. So I've been putting this one in an inch and an eighth, and I've been putting that one in three quarters of an inch, I believe. So we're going to take these apart, never seize them, and put them back together. Alright, so this is the original eight inch center section out of the car. I cleaned it up with some brake clean. I'm gonna blow it off and whatnot. Um, it's got some high speed stuff right here, some dollar store silver, trailer park aluminum. So I'm gonna clean it up, flip it over, clean the other side, get all the silicone and stuff off. It's got a mini spool with a set of 411 gears in it. I'm probably going to switch to a 355, but I want to see how it goes down the road with those first. So we're going to clean this off and get back to work. All right, this is a Harbor Freight El Cheapo transmission jack. When you're a fat, lazy bastard like me, you put your center section on there. Take your Harbor Freight electric ratchet, put an adapter on it, you crank it up right there where you need it and slide her on. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's get this monster in there. Right 
there is said center section up into place. Now we got to put all the bolts in around it. And hopefully we can figure out some pinion angle once we get these ladder bars hooked up. And hopefully something's happening here. We don't have no fancy lighting, so this is the best you're going to get. I don't know if you can see that, but it barely misses our tranny cooler. It is up off the jack stands. I got to put jack stands under the rear end and figure out these ladder bars, but I might have to move that tranny cooler just a smidge or something. We'll find out more once we get the wheels and tires on it and get the ladder bars in it and put some weight in the trunk and see what happens. But we might have to move that just a smidge. It'll be real, real close. I'm going to go push on the trunk lid and see what happens. Alright, we're getting back on this turd today. This morning, it's Tuesday morning. We're going to do the inside of both doors and the front seat panel. Biggles is going to check it all out and make sure we're doing a good job. We got to put some stuff back in the back, the cookie tray and phone. Sonic's coming out here to help. But that's our goal for today. We're going to do some tough stuff. Then some protectant. Then we're gonna do the protectant on the seats. Get the inside of these doors done. And the inside windows. Then we're ready to flip this baby around and do the other side. Bagels is double checking, making sure nobody got anything dirty in here. Sonic's coming out to see what the hell she wants. So we're gonna get on this thing. So this fancy stuff here is what I spray on the interior after I get it cleaned. It's supposed to help it repel stains and stuff like that. Does it work? I don't know. Is it a gimmick? Did they take my money? I don't know. It smells good. Seems like a good product. Their other stuff seems to work good. So I spray it on there. In the summertime, me and my wife practically live in these cars. You know, she drives one every day to work. I don't drive them to the shop though because I'm usually greasy, but they don't usually sit too much in the summer, so I do all I can to save on them. And this is one of the things I do. And this, you just kind of mist it on the seats and let it sit. Here we are. It's Friday. I haven't recorded nothing in a while. I've been doing side work. A little under the weather, I guess. I don't know. Just a lot of shit going on. Nothing important. So, we got to make the rear trunk extension pocket covers. We got to put some covers on the battery. We got to fix the choke. We got to take the driver's seat out due to the fact the tachometer is not coming on. We got to run the rear brake lines across the rear end. And we're going to use a relay for the ignition. We got to tighten the fuel lines to the car. We got to put a fuel vent in. We got to tighten the fuel lines to the carburetor. We got to put coolant and rear end oil in it. The garage is still a wreck, but we've got a lot of shit done since last time we recorded anything. Drive shaft's out being made and lengthened. Um, we tested the electrical system. Everything's working pretty good except for the tachometer. And we got a few issues in the back with the... One tail light's a little different than the other. Dash lights work. The horn doesn't work too. I gotta check that out. I forgot about that. In the trunk, we gotta make a fuel vent. Everything else seems okay so far. We got our Mosier axles in. Our rear end is completely together with 411s. We gotta tighten up our ladder bars. But it's resting on the springs. Our shackles are pointing backwards like they're supposed to, not to the front like they were before.
it's came a long ways in just a couple of days. So I'm gonna get busy making a fuel vent. Um, all we're gonna do, hook a hose to the vent pipe right there, drill a hole right here, run it down there and hook it to this little vent. Falcons are notorious for being a pain in the ass to fill up. If you reroute your vent, it fills up pretty easily. This is where the trunk extensions go. So we're gonna get to work on this thing and get some work done. We'll check in, in a little bit. All right. So this is our vent tube. We put the hose on. We put a little grommet on there. You can't see it in the dark, really. A little grommet in the hole, and our little breather piece is hanging down inside this channel, sort of. Now we're going to come up to the front of the car. We are going to double check all the fuel hoses and coolant hoses. Check all these fittings. And add some coolant and some fuel. And then we'll check the one, the fuel back there. We'll shut the heat off, top off the fuel tank. I, I went and got five gallons of 93. Hopefully we don't have no leaks. Then over here, we're gonna put a relay. Run some more wire through here. Over to here, a power wire from the battery. Connection right there to power up a relay to power the ignition. So we always have 12 volts and we don't have to worry about the Petronics giving us grief. I think that'll work. Like I said, we cranked on it yesterday, put a little gas in the throat here, had a couple backfires, pops and bangs, we double checked our timing. When Mike was here, everything seems okay. I believe it was flooded, so we decided to stop. And then we decided we needed a relay for the ignition system, so that's gonna be next. So let's get this baby fired up and see what happens. And our wires ain't very tight. That could be a problem too. All right, let's do some checks of some fuel lines and coolant lines. All right, we put our first five gallons of gas in it. We didn't have no leaks back there yet. We got our vent in, worked pretty good. We got our coolant in here. She's full. We're working on our relay. We had to take all the wires out and reposition them how we wanted them. Four pin relay. So this has constant 12 volts no matter what. I think it's gonna work out good. All right, stay tuned. All right, it's Saturday. We're back on the little Falcon. We installed a relay for the ignition. Mike suggested we do that. Cleaned up a very little bit. Now we're going to come back here to the trunk. And we're going to clean up the trunk area. We got some protective boots to put over top of all these cables here. Keep this pretty safe. Can't really see it in the dark. And the two down there, I guess there's four total. And then we do have some a cover for the battery post. And I believe the trunk is done. Vacuum it. Oh, we gotta make these little covers that go here so we quit losing things down there. 
I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet, or if we're even going to do it. I might just leave it open and say the piss on it. It's looking like that's going to be the motto. Vacuum it and the trunk is done. We'll have to put a new seal on it eventually. I have it. I just don't know if I'm doing it right now. So let's get those little covers on. Get the back of this thing buttoned up here. Get it vacuumed out. Move on to the next item. So this is going to be the plate for this side. Here, let's see if we can figure it out. We're going to trace this. Then we'll screw it down right there. And that'll hold that in. We'll probably chump that up a little bit, I guess. But I think that'll work for this to fit in there. So I'll have to make two of them, but we're going to try it on this side first. So let's see what we can do. So this is my pattern. I had to put the texture side up. When I put the cardboard in there, it didn't fit exactly how I wanted it, so I made this a little wider. And then I made it a little, a little longer, I can trim to fit. So I'm going to get the jigsaw, I think, cut this bad boy out and see how it fits. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be in there. Alright. So, inside the trunk. We got our little panels. They're not perfect by no means, but they'll keep shit from sliding down the back side, like the bolts to the battery switch that I lost. Now we're gonna move on up here to the choke, I believe. Try to figure out how we're gonna do the choke. We gotta keep it open. We may even take it off. I'm not 100% sure yet. If I take it off, it can't close, right? So, we're going to see where we are with the choke. And how we want to keep it open. So, there we go. We fixed the choke. Choke is going to be permanently open. We had to do a little repair to that wire right there. Next... event is going to be probably gear oil I guess we'll have to go look at the list and see where we are so this is where we are we got the choke done we got the rear pockets done and we got the choke done now we're gonna go do the rear brake lines and fill the differential full of oil then all we got to do for the rest of today is look at the tack and tomorrow, we're going to do the exhaust. So let's go see what we can figure out with these rear brake lines. And gear oil. We did not cut those plastic panels with a jigsaw. We used the throatless shear. I love that thing. Now we're going to mock up these stainless steel rear brake lines across the back of the rear end. I got these at Finest Lines, I believe. SS Stainless Tube or something. It has a fancy name. But it was a whole kit for a 63 Falcon. And for the majority of it, it fit. So now, we're going to get in there and throw these under there. Up underneath it here, I made a little bracket right here. That'll hold the brake line. I used a brake line off of a four-wheel drive Ford truck. And then we're going to run a line from there to here, there to here. We bought pre-brent lines. Hopefully they'll work out pretty good. Then we can put some gear oil in it. So, we're going to reach this line like so, right here. 
We got it tucked up in there, of course. It's tucked up in the steel brake line. So we'll have to get it out of there. Bring it back around here. And it's just gonna bolt to that bracket we made. Right there. And it'll be up out of the way and everything will be gravy. When we will unhook the line up there before we do the hard line and bend this around so it fits better. Twist it a little bit, I guess. But it'll work. Let's get that thing on there. got these brake lines on it's all zip tied up ready to go they're tight this is a little bit of a concern here might have to redo the transmission cooler we're gonna do some testing and see what happens I believe the shocks will bottom out before it hits the cooler So I think we're okay. If I do that, if I bottom out the shocks, then the car is going to break anyways. So I think we'll be okay. Let's see what's next. Next is we're going to tighten up the ladder bars. Um, we're going to find these U bolts for the dry shaft and put some oil in this thing. We still have to flare a line on there, but my buddy Mike has my flare tool. He's bringing it Monday. And then we gotta start working on this exhaust and see how we're gonna do that. And the dry shaft loop. But, progress is progress. All right, so this week's video. Well, more progress on the Falcon, more progress on clean and tilted. The Falcon's kicking my ass. This thing is crazy. Not one part fits a Falcon that says it fits a Falcon. But we'll get it handled. This is our last full week coming up before the show. And we got a lot to do. We still haven't got it started yet. We're getting ready to do that Monday, I believe. So stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Check it out. Hit that bell. Whatever you got to do, do something. Hope you enjoy. Bye.